So live from Amsterdam at the Cisco Live Show, this is The Daily Standup. I'm Mel Delgado, developer advocate at Cisco. And I'm Denise Kwan, also a developer advocate at Cisco. All right, Denise, you want to queue up today's topic? We, we were having yeah. this discussion earlier, and now we're going to bring it to you on camera, and I'm hoping this is something that, that strikes a chord with you, perhaps, or even just some of your curiosity. You were talking about... Yeah. Yeah, earlier I was asking you, like, as a developer, we expose APIs in our products and we pick and choose typically what we want to give to the, to the, the audience, the world. Um, but as an in operations role in SRE, what APIs do you actually use? Like, what types of APIs, what information do you want to know? Because it, I might expose something and you're like, oh, why, you, why would you even take, have that out? But why aren't you doing this? But So it would be good as a developer to know what is being used so that we can build our products and expose APIs that are actually necessary, that you actually need. You, you know what? I'm going to first start by saying I want everything. And then I have <laughs> questions about why some things are not exposed. But mm -hmm. I'll save that one for last. Because if you're okay. going to ask me questions, I'm going to... I'm going to fire them right back at you. So, okay. So, um, a, a few use cases come to mind. One is uh, you're thinking about, say, the status of something. I'm just going to call it a thing. In the networking world, or Cisco, okay, networking world, it might be the status of some interface on something. Mm -hmm. That could be a server. It could be a an interface to something that connects to, you know, like a, a network device. Where we want to look at something like some sort of status and okay. return it and decide what we need to do. In the server world, especially for applications, another use case, and there's so many, but I'm just like thinking of something coming off the top of my head. So one of them is uh, keys, like being able to rotate your keys. Okay. So that's, that's something we want to do programmatically, and that's just because we might do one deployment after the next deployment after the next deployment, and we want to do so in a way that's secure, and we don't want to use stale keys because we mm -hmm. feel that that's perhaps a security sort of it's just not good security posture to maintain. So I think rotating keys is something that that is important, and sometimes it's 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 difficult for us, right? When mm -hmm. products don't have that, okay. so it's like I got to go back to the UI and generate a new. Yeah, key it's just like I, let's take the human out of the loop as much as possible. So from an automation perspective, something like rotating keys, I think, is a really good example of of an API that I feel is very important to operations. That makes sense. And I mean, a lot a lot of products just have, OK, you generate an API key, and this is the one that you use. Or it has an expiration, and you do have to go to the UI to do that. But yeah, I mean, there's a good amount of them that you can, from an API, go and refresh your tokens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, it's I think I'd do it manually, or mm -hmm. I've, got a, I've got a longer lasting one, like we yeah. were talking about earlier. Um, it's just, okay, the expiration date's a year from now or something. And that's just not good security posture. Yep. I think it would be ideal if we had something that we could rotate okay. programmatically at will. So that's, that's not a hard concept. That's not difficult to do. I mean, I think that is mostly making sure that you have that ability to refresh tokens. And there are a ton of APIs that, or a ton of products that do that now. So it's not foreign or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's one one that comes to mind. Um, since you brought it up, now it's my turn. So uh, <laughs> we were just having this discussion. And maybe for, for everybody else, it'll make some sense as well. I, I, I want to know, like from an operations perspective, I was so curious to know like why are some APIs, you're deciding like, well, what do I expose and what do I not expose? Mm -hmm. So from my perspective, I'm a, well, why wouldn't you want to expose everything? In other words, anything that I could do in the UI with like click ops, yep. that's just <laughs> what ops. I'm just doing. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm just doing through click ops. Why couldn't I have the same collection of APIs available to essentially be able to do anything that I could do with click ops, I should be able to do through the API. What, what's, what's the deciding factor? if you will, in saying, OK, I'm going to expose this, but I won't expose something else. A lot of things, it just runs based on what we think people would use. Um, I, 
you know, typically there's like the PM, the, the, the product owner, product marketing person who will go out and survey and say like, oh, what are things that, what kind of features do you want and whatnot. And that's usually what drives which APIs are exposed. Um, some products expose everything. And they, because oh. especially API first products, they typically expose everything. And anything is free for all to use, they're all tested, everything is supported. But then there's some products that they just have way too many APIs that are out there. And so the amount of load that it would be that, because when you expose an API, somebody can go and use the API and just keep on polling and polling and polling and polling. And it's not the proper thing to do, but you can't stop it. Like you, you could put some sort of limitation and you know, all of that, but usually that limitation has to be already pretty high because if you put it really low, then what if the typical use cases is not going to be able to handle? So, so there are some APIs that will have a lot of performance, and um, but it's needed, right? Because let's just say you're fetching a whole bunch of information, and when that's the case, then it's a high load on the system. But if somebody abuses one of those APIs, that could be a big problem. And um, it's really finding the balance between what people actually need with exposing what people want. And if you expose everything, and let's just say I need to expose this, but then it's a high performance API, and I have to assume that somebody's gonna use it a lot. And yeah, you can do rate limiting, and you can do all of that, but then you also have to put it to a certain level where I'm not gonna go rate limit, and then I can't use it on a normal, typical use case. And so that's the main reason why we have to decide what we do. And it, so it, it all varies because it depends on the product, right? If there's, let's just say there's only like 10 APIs. So, all right, so if, I'm, all. if I'm picking up what you're throwing down, are you saying that there is a such thing as too many APIs exposed? There, are, it is. There, there are some products and not saying that it was designed right or wrong or whatever, but there are some products that have like 100 APIs. How, as a user, as a developer, looking at this documentation, know which ones to use? And you get overwhelmed, right? Like when you, if you go to a store that is like all packed with all of this stuff, you usually walk in and you're like, oh, no, thank you. <laughs> Versus you go into a store and it's like, all go and organize right. and everything, and you'll be like, okay, I can handle it. So with, when things are really complex and having a lot of APIs, sometimes people don't want to use it because it's just too much. They don't know which one to go through. And so that is an, one thing that we try to keep in mind is like, is this too much? How can we dial it down? Um, do you really need this information? Yeah, so, yeah. Well, the way I look at it is like you, you have this like box of Legos. You, know, you ever like, I like go in your I kids' rooms? You know, yeah, you get your Legos <laughs> and then there's just this box of them and you just dump them on the table. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, well, here you go. Yeah. And you've got something to work <laughs> with, but then you're just like, I've got all these different pieces. What am I yeah. supposed to do with this, right? Yeah. Is that, is that kind of what you're saying? That like, yeah. it's, it's just too much? Too like much. It's, Versus if you bought one of those Lego sets. It's got the picture on the it box. It got the picture and you can go and say, okay, these are the ones that you have. Or you, you know what? They have those three-in-one Lego sets. Oh, now you're going to hold it. Three-in-one. So you could be like, do I want this one? Do I want uh, this one or that one? And you choose because it's very easy. There's only three. Yeah, Versus yeah. when you pour the bucket, yeah. it's endless. Right, right. All right, well, I mean, that, I guess I could take that. So other questions about like the things that we would want to use for app devs, like things that operations would mm -hmm. want to use. Do you have any other questions about that? I mean... What? So you had said earlier that you want the refresh token kind of concept, That's one, which, yeah. mm -hmm. which is which is good. Yeah. But like, are you looking more towards like APIs to use for monitoring, or yeah. are you looking for um, admin admin types of APIs, or yes, and yes, <laughs> and yes. Don't no. be too greedy. No, man. no, right? Yeah, I, right? <laughs> no. I think the monitoring one is also super super important. So uh, being able to monitor something, try to collect uh, metrics from, from things is, is vital. 
mm -hmm. to any operation in today's modern world. So that, that's another good one. So we we, we want to find, and then here's the thing is, understanding it in the context of metrics. It, it, you can get logging all day long. Mm -hmm. Like we, I think we, we've, that base has been covered, but when you're looking at metrics, the thing that fit engages or the data that, fit, or not the thing, the data that fits engages and so forth. Those, those are the things that, um, that we look at as well, just so that we can somehow either look at things in real time as they're potentially failing or look at things ahead of time, be able to predict ahead of time that when we're getting uh, the uh, metrics, the telemetry coming in, we'll be able to like trend towards like, hey, this is, there's too much memory being used on this mm -hmm. trend line and in two hours it's going to be exhausted and we're going to hit some sort of, you know, we're going to hit the wall somewhere. Mm -hmm. so, so those types of uh, monitoring type of metrics are also but super you important. you said real time. Are you, ex are you polling or are you trying to listen? Ah, good question. So it depends on, for example, if, if we're using a tool and I'm using something like Prometheus and I'm writing a custom exporter, let's mm -hmm. just say, because no exporter exists for some application. That's when we would use a polling mechanism only because that's how Prometheus was designed. Mm -hmm. Prometheus is designed to be a polling type of, so it's a pull model versus pushing. So. I mean, that's good. That's like vital information, right? Because polling on a system, depending on how frequent you poll, is going to create lots of load on a system, yeah. right? Because you're constantly going back. And then also polling APIs, you have to worry about cache. Yeah. Do you cache this information? If you're constantly polling it, you can't cache we it. We need to be you're relevant. Going yeah. to be, yeah. It's going to be real time. So yeah. these are important things that developers kind of need to know because what if I created an API and I gave you the status, but then I cache this information because I don't want to go and hit my back end so many times, yeah, right? Yeah. Then you're going to be like polling and you're getting the exact yeah. same information over and over <laughs> until that cache explodes. We're going to be having words later. Like, come <laughs> on. Like, you know, like, why is my stuff, the, the, you know, things aren't going so well, but now mm -hmm. I'm looking at, oh, it's because I was looking at stale data, so. But that's why that conversation is important, right? To, to yeah. for the developers to talk to those who are using the APIs to understand what is the use case that they're going to be using it for. Is it a poll? Is it what, how often are they going to be using it? Yeah. And you know, those are things that you build in and accommodate for because adding some of that stuff actually takes performance off of the system because if it's not going to cache, we're hitting it more yeah. and then is it worth it? Right, right. Well, those are the issues that we have from an ops perspective and from dev. Mm -hmm. What are your issues? We'd love to hear about the things that you'd like to see, or if you're a dev, for example, the things that mm -hmm. you as a dev would like to see from, op or would like to provide, say, for operations, for an application to be more relevant with its APIs, and also, obviously, performant, right? Because that was mm -hmm. another issue that you had brought up. Yep. And, of, of course, functional as well, like provide a top amount of functionality. Now, if you're an ops person, what would you want to ask a dev? You know, like, could you make this available for me? Whether or not it's a publicly exposed API yep. or a private API, should they all be out there? We'd love to hear your comments. Uh, yeah. Closing thoughts? No, I mean, I think the same thing. Like, give us your comments. Or, you know, if you're afraid to ask your ops person, just drop it in the comments, and then I will ask Mel. And Mel would be happy to answer the question I'm for happy you. To the and so, there, you, I, I think I said in a previous episode, like, no offense, but, and I think that that's why they have trouble, we have, devs and ops have trouble communicating because the questions that we ask sometimes might be perceived as offensive. Like when I had asked you, what do you do, yeah. right? <laughs> what would you say it is you do here, right? so, yeah. So yeah. drop whatever question you have in the comments and let us know because this daily stand-up show is for you guys and to let you guys, I'm, I'm the voice for you, so, and so is Mel. And so let us know what you think and yeah, check, uh, catch you in the next episode.